Good morning, everyone. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. I'm glad to see everyone this morning, and I hope that you are doing well. I welcome you into this time of worship as we are in fellowship with one another, as we are in communion with our Lord. And I hope that this time is uplifting to you in the next you know, hour that we're together to, uh, this morning. I do have a couple announcements I'd like to pass along for you this morning. Uh, just to kind of reiterate what is our policy at this time, I know that uh, there are some questions, especially with the uh, Delta variant of COVID-19 rising and, and surging and all that, and there have been questions about mask wearing, face covering wearing. Right now, at this point, our, our policy is if you feel comfortable wearing a mask, if you would like to do that, you are more than welcome to do so. Please do so. Uh, we are always encouraging people to do that if, if that's what they feel is best. We are not mandating it, uh, so you do not have to if that's what you would like, but um, we're obviously wanting to keep everybody as healthy as possible. Um, we don't want to spread any virus, whether it's COVID or anything else. So we want to try to be, be healthy and you know, do what you think is, is best to keep, keep everyone, keep you and everyone around you healthy, okay? And we'll kind of keep you updated if anything changes. I would, don't know, day by day thing, isn't it? That's, but that's been the way it's been for the last, uh, we, uh, well, year and a half. So uh, day by day things. Uh, this last Thursday, we had a little bit of a, interesting day with a pipe burst downstairs in the janitor's closet. Uh, we're very thankful that the plumber was here and he did it, not me or anybody else. He did it. So um, that's why we had to uh, or postpone Women's Association on Thursday. So it has been moved to this coming Thursday at noon downstairs in Fellowship Hall. So anybody, any women who are associated with Women's Association and all women are invited to attend Thursday at noon. Susie is gone this week, so she has asked me to announce to all the youth are downstairs, but if you have any youth uh, that are part of Epic Youth, uh, next Sunday from 1 to 6, uh, the Epic Youth are going to have one last summer fling at uh, the lake house of Susie's. Uh, so they're going to they're gonna meet here at 1 o'clock, carpool out to the lake house and have some fun, and then come back about 6 o'clock, and they're going to have tacos for dinner. So... Maybe we all want to be out there. I don't know. I'm sure Susie will. Yeah, we'll all be young again. We'll all splash in the water, all that good stuff. If you saw our Facebook uh, page earlier, I think it was on Tuesday, I, I posted a picture that was a tease. Um, Cheryl, Susie, and I have been busy the last year and a half putting together different things. Uh, different videos, different projects, and uh, I'd like to debut the one we worked on recently. We've been holding this for a year and a half, or almost, well, a year now. Um, so this is an advertisement for something coming up. So George and Wayne, if you could play this for me, for me, I would greatly appreciate it. Church picnic, take three. <laughs> Just give me the apple pie. The shade. Lemonade. The ants. In my pants. Come on, my friends. For the fun never ends. Church picnic. We are there. I don't know where our inspiration comes from, but we just have some fun, so <laughs> yeah. Yeah, don't quit my day job, I know. But it was fun, it was fun to make. So right now, we, our plan is on uh, August, Sunday, August 29th to have the church picnic after, after service. Uh, so come on, my friends, where the fun never ends. Church picnic, we are there. So are there any other announcements for the good of the fellowship? If there are none, would you please rise as you are able and greet one another in the peace and love of our Lord Jesus Christ.
Let us join together in our responsive call to worship found either in the bulletin or on the screen. How good it is to sing praise to our God. The Lord builds up his people and binds up their wounds. God determines the stars in the sky and calls them each by name. Praise the Lord with mighty power. No one is like our God. Let us sing to the Lord with thanksgiving and make music to our God. Praise the Lord. Let us join together in our opening song of praise, Morning Has Broken. Please be seated. Let us join together in our unison prayer, again printed in the bulletin or on the screen. O oh Lord God, we come before you emptied of all that would distract, seeking all that would redeem. Let these moments not become so routine as to be predictable. Prepare us for the unexpected. Open us to the movement of the Holy Spirit. We pray this in the name of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you. 
Amen. Thank you, Ruth. Very, very, very appropriate. In Christ we stand. In Christ alone. Our scripture reading for this morning, we are reading from the Apostle Paul's letter to the Philippians. We're reading from chapter 4, verses 10 through 20. If you'd like to follow along in one of the Pew Bibles, it is on page 832. Hear now the words of Paul. I rejoice greatly in the Lord that at last you have renewed your concern for me. Indeed, you have been concerned, but you had no opportunity to show it. I am not saying this because I am in need, for I have learned to be content, whatever the circumstances. I know what it is to be in need, and I know what it is to have plenty. I have learned the secret of being content in any and every situation, whether well-fed or hungry, whether living in plenty or in want. I can do everything through him who gives me strength. Yet it was good of you to share in my troubles. Moreover, as you Philippians know, in the early days of your acquaintance with the gospel, when I set out from Macedonia, not one church shared with me in the matter of giving and receiving except you only. For even when I was in Thessalonica, you sent me aid again and again when I was in need. Not that I was looking for a gift, but I am looking for what may be credited to your account. I have received full payment and even more. I am amply supplied now that I have received from Epaphroditus the gifts you sent. They are a fragrant offering, an acceptable sacrifice, pleasing to God. And my God will meet all your needs according to his glorious riches in Christ Jesus. To our God and Father be glory forever and ever. Amen. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. So quite some time ago, I I had an idea of structuring a sermon series around questions from you, the congregation. Instead of me picking and deciding all the topics, I thought, well, what, what are your questions? What are your thoughts? What would you like to hear and learn about? Well, I wasn't quite sure about it because you know, you never know what you're going to be asked, I guess. But I kept floating, or floating it around in my mind for quite some time. And so now I have finally decided to do it. And so for the, the sermons for the rest of August are going to be based on questions that you submitted to me. Questions about the Christian faith, questions about scripture verses that you would like to have me explain or learn more about. And so I will do my best to answer these questions, and, and maybe that this round, this round of questions and, and sermon responses will, will spark another opportunity for you to ask questions and influence my preaching in the future. Well, we're starting with a scripture verse that you probably see quoted by athletes, by artists, by musicians, by movie stars. I see it printed on t-shirts and bumper stickers, and I see it constantly shared on social media accounts. The verse is from the Apostle Paul's letter to the Philippian Christians, specifically where he wrote, I can do everything through him, that is Christ, who gives me strength. This Bible verse is often used to give someone the, the motivation to do whatever task that they are setting out to do or what, any task that is in front of them. And I think the thought is pretty clear. It's the thought that, well, I can do anything, anything because Christ gives me the strength to do it. Or that's what's believed that this verse is saying. But is that really what Paul meant when he wrote these words all those centuries ago, can I or any of us really do anything and Christ will give me the strength to do it? 
Well, that's the question presented before us today. To help answer that question, I think it would be wise, and my professors through the ages would certainly applaud and say that it would be good to look at what Paul said around this particular verse, to look at the context. And the the mantra often repeated in my biblical, biblical studies is that context is king, especially with understanding scripture. When we look at the entire letter, the chief theme of Paul's letter to the Philippians is all about encouragement. Paul is writing to the Philippians to encourage them to continue growing in their commitment to serve God and one another. They have done wonderfully so far. They have been the church in their city of Philippi and they have been proclaiming the gospel message and Paul is writing them to encourage them to continue to remain strong in their ministry. They're doing a good job, keep it up, is essentially what he's saying. The secondary reason for Paul's letter, and which is a primary topic of our our, our verses today, is to thank the Philippian Christians for a gift that they had recently sent him. Everyone loves gifts. At least I hope everyone loves gifts. I think everybody loves gifts. When I think of giving, of, of receiving and giving gifts, Uh, especially this week when reading through and preparing for this this passage, it reminded me of the time when I was living in in Chicago for seminary. Each semester, about halfway through, my mom would call me up and she would ask me, well, what are some supplies that I need? I mean, I was a 25-year-old kid. I would go through a lot of stuff, just like anybody else. And so I needed cans of soup, Maybe I needed instant noodles or ketchup or laundry detergent or quarters for laundry, you know, that type of stuff. She would ask, do you need that stuff? And of course I said, yes, of course I need that stuff. Well then, as my mom would do, she would go shopping and then she would get a big box and package it all up and then send the package to me through the mail. I always laughed when the mail room called me up and told me, every time, halfway through the semester, that I have a heavy package waiting for me. Well, I, the first time my mom sent me a package, I clearly underestimated what she had sent me because I walked down to the mail room, I picked up the package, and I walked back to my apartment. The problem was that I barely made it back to my uh, my apartment before my arms fell off because, I mean, she gave me a big package and it was extremely heavy. So the next time my mom sent me a care package, I learned and I drove my car over to the mail room and then picked up my care package that way. Whether it was these month or uh, semester care packages or whether it was weekly phone calls, my mom did a lot to support me during my time in seminary, during my whole education time. It's good, and it's, it's something that revives your spirit to receive support like that. And at this time, Paul was in desperate need of support. Paul revealed in the first chapter of this letter that he had made it to Rome as he had planned. I think that was his big plan, was to make it to Rome and possibly even speak to Caesar and proclaim the gospel message to Caesar. So he had made it to Rome, but not in the way he had anticipated. He was in Rome not as a welcomed preacher, but as a prisoner of the emperor. Prior to this letter, Paul had been arrested by Jewish authorities because, well, they didn't like that he was preaching Jesus as the Messiah. And they finally got him. And uh, time after time, Paul would go on trial before both Jewish authorities and Roman authorities for his supposed crimes. 
But during one of his trials, the trial before Festus, Festus was a Roman governor who reigned over the area of Judea in the middle of the first century. In the middle of this trial, Paul claimed that he had done no crime, not according to the Jewish law or the Roman law. And because he had committed no crime, he requested an appeal before Caesar. And Paul, who was a Roman citizen, he had the right to make an appeal before the emperor. And so Festus, the Roman governor, said, fine, to Caesar you shall go, and sent him off to Rome in chains. If you're interested in reading more about these events, they are record, they're recorded in the final eight chapters of the book of Acts. So, Paul wrote this letter from a Roman prison. That would have been an extremely difficult time for Paul. But one positive was that he was not abandoned. The Philippian Christians gathered what finances they could scrounge together, and they sent it to him in support. They sent their financial gift with a man by the name of Epaphroditus, who was a member of the Philippian congregation. Now, I want to make sure that you know that this was by no means a small gesture on behalf of the Philippian Christians. For you see, the the city of Philippi was a remote post in the Roman Empire. It was off the beaten tracks, and there was no such thing as the Roman postal service in those days. So with Paul in custody, that would have also been an even more difficult way to get him word and support. But that didn't stop the Philippians. The Philippians went out of their way to support Paul. And and in response to their overly generous gift. Paul wrote them a thank you note. But he didn't just write them a regular thank you note. He wrote them this letter. How many thank you notes have you written that turned out to be like the letter to the Philippians? Paul sat down in a Roman prison, in chains, guarded by Roman soldiers, and he wrote a thank you note to his friends. And he ended up writing one of the most beloved documents in letter writing history, a letter that became a part of Christian scripture. I don't know about you, but I've never written a thank you note like that. I don't think that happens every day. In reading this, I am moved by both the Philippians and Paul's actions here. The Philippians not only went out of their way to help a friend and their brother, and Paul, who is in chains, went out of his way to thank his friends for their generosity. I think there's a lesson in these words for us for today. There are probably many times where we find ourselves in a position much like the Philippians. We have the opportunity to help someone. So what can we do? How can we go out of our way to help those in need? How far are we willing to go to help a sibling of faith? Or perhaps we may find ourselves, like Paul, having benefited from someone's generosity. So if we're like Paul, how can we then go out of our way to show our appreciation and gratitude? As you can clearly see, Paul writes that he is extremely grateful for the Philippians' gifts. But then he also mentions another lesson that he's learned during his life, the lesson of contentment. He certainly appreciated the gift, but he also states that he didn't necessarily need it. Now, I imagine that most of us would, if we are given a gift, we would probably not say to the one who gave it to us, like, yeah, that's nice, but I didn't really need that. That's just... Not, I imagine we're a little bit nicer than that. 
But Paul isn't trying to be rude. Paul is, is trying to teach an important lesson that the Philippian Christians, that Paul and I think all Christians should learn. Though he did not need the gift, or he did not need the gift because, as he wrote in verse 11, I have learned to be content in whatever the circumstance. And Paul goes on to state how he, has, he knows what it's like to not only have everything, he, he, he has more than he needs. He, he is thriving. He knows what that's like. He also knows what it's like to be in desperate need of something. What's interesting to me is that Paul seems to be stating that both poverty and wealth are in a way trials of themselves. Now, that's probably not how most of us would categorize these positions. We're inclined to view poverty as a trial, yes. You, you got to get through that. You, you, you have to overcome that. But we, we usually see wealth as a great blessing, something we want. We're used to the, the great American story of, of rising out of the depths of poverty and, and into a life of abundance. That's the life that we, we seek. But Paul puts them at extremes. That both wealth and poverty are, are weights to the human spirit that both can distort and also degrade our personalities, our character. Both can be trials and both can be destructive. That's interesting to me. Paul says we're not supposed to go one or the other, or even both, I guess. Instead, Paul indicates that he has learned the truth. Contentment, true contentment. What does it mean by contentment? I think it's not about having all that you want, but wanting what you have. It's being satisfied with what you have, whether it's a little or whether it's a lot, whether it's being well-fed or whether it's going hungry, whether it's living in a four-story home or maybe on the streets. Paul says that he has faced them both. And out of enduring both sides, that's where Paul writes in verse 13, I can do all things through him who strengthens me. So it doesn't matter if you're rich or you're poor. It doesn't matter our size or our abilities. What matters, I think, is the cause of Christ. Every circumstance that Paul has faced, whether it's hardship, whether it's comfort, was not done by his own authority and power, it was done under the authority and power of the Lord Jesus. Everything, all that he has done, all that Paul has done is for the work of the kingdom of God, and everything that he has done has been powered by Jesus. So I think to answer the question for today, can I really do everything through Christ? If you mean something of, well, can I jump off of a mountain and Christ will give me the strength to survive? Or with the Olympics just ending, will Christ give me the strength to to get up off the couch? And if I just run the 100 meter dash, Christ will give me the strength to win the gold medal? Well, the answer is probably no. Should it be used by football players or other athletes to to mean that Jesus will give them the strength to to win the Super Bowl or the NBA Finals or the World Cup or whatever? Again, hmm, maybe, but probably not. Will Jesus give us the strength to be a witness for him and for his kingdom in any circumstance? 
To that, I say yes. I think that's what I believe Paul means here. Jesus gives us the strength to serve him in whatever situation we find ourselves. He gives us the strength to not only serve, but be content with whatever we have, wherever we are. Gives us the strength to know that Jesus is with us in each and every situation. I think this is a reminder that the bottom line is not necessarily about what we want. It's about what God wants. God leads us to where he wants us. And whatever God wants is what I should want. And I think this can be a very, very hard lesson for us to learn. We almost have to learn it continuously day after day. Paul learned that lesson that we can do all things through Christ, that all we experience is used by God to show others the wonder and love of God. What are some circumstances or situations that you've come through in your life That when you look back, you think, hmm, God got me through that. Jesus gave me the strength. How can I use that to point to him? As I mentioned before, we often try to seek after wealth and comfort. We so often avoid pain and problems. But Paul's words here make me wonder if that's really in our best interests. If Christ truly does give us the strength to be content in any situation, should we perhaps not work so hard to avoid our problems or suffering? or trials, or troubles. Could it be that's where God wants us to be in order to show his perfect strength through us? After all, Paul was in prison when he wrote this this letter, when he wrote these famous words, and it was through his difficult circumstances that the Philippians and others saw and heard about Christ in Paul's life. Maybe God could do the same through us. A few questions to ponder for you. I love the way that Paul ends this section of his letter, and I I think it's an appropriate way to end my sermon for today. In verses 19 and 20, after all that he said, Paul confidently reassures his readers that God will meet all of their needs according to the glorious riches in Christ Jesus. Whether rich or poor, healthy or in in sickness or in health, or whatever our circumstance may be, God will be there in helping his children get through. And everything that we have and everything that we do is ultimately to the glory of our God and Father who reigns and lives forever and ever. Let us pray. Oh God, our loving Heavenly Father, we thank you for the wonder of your gracious promises to us. You have given us so much and have blessed us beyond measure. Help us to hear and learn the lesson that Paul taught. Help us to be content in all of our circumstances, whether we find ourselves in humble places or high places. 
Help us to look to your son Jesus each moment of the day for our strength. May we not rely on our own imperfect human abilities for without you, we can do nothing. May we be empowered by Jesus and guided by the Holy Spirit to do your will in our lives. Oh God, we again find ourselves in tough circumstances these days. We are threatened by a variant of the COVID virus. We face uncertainty in many ways, yet we trust that we are in your hands of safety. Help us to remain healthy, O great physician. May you inspire our civil and church leaders with wisdom that we may remain healthy. May we not be gripped by fear, but instead by love. Help us to love ourselves and our neighbors by doing what we can to stay healthy. And help us trust in your faithful presence, whether in sickness or in health. And give us the strength of Christ to endure. We pray for those who are on our hearts and minds this morning. I especially pray for those who were affected by last night's storm and the flash flooding. I pray for those whose cars or homes or buildings were damaged. We continue to pray for Babe McDaniel. We pray for Paula Marcuson's sister-in-law, Brenda. We pray for those who were affected by the heat and the humidity. We pray for students, teachers, and administrators as they begin to prepare for another year of school. May you bless them and watch over them. We also pray for those prayers that we cannot speak aloud, the prayers that only you can hear and understand, O oh God. Hear our prayers, O God, and answer them in your mercy. Whatever answer you may give us, help us to be content with it. We pray all these things in the power of the Holy Spirit and in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. As has been our custom for quite, a, quite some time, the offering plate is in the back by the sound booth. If you have not dropped off your offering at this time, or you can do that uh, when you, as you exit. But in response to your faithful and generous giving and for God's blessings upon us, would you please rise as you are able and let us join together in our doxology.
Would you please join in our unison prayer of dedication printed in the bulletin or on the screen? Almighty God, you have done great things for us. Bless all we offer you, ourselves, our time, our money, our treasures, and all that we have. Bless us with your grace and love, and give you only the glory and the honor of all the world for the sake of Jesus Christ our Lord. Closing him, he leadeth me. forth and be content in every and each circumstance for Christ gives you strength in each of those in each of those times and may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you in every step that you take amen <laughs>